And so I'm going to start off by introducing myself. My name is Lindsay Spear. I'm the campaign manager for Heat Smart CNY. And joining me here is Dick Kornbluth. He's our home energy advisor for the Heat Smart CNY campaign and also board chair of the Building Performance Institute. And also in the room, we have John King with Snug Planet and Matt Dennis with Halco. And on the phone, we have Jesse Cook with uh, Geotherm. And so the way tonight's going to work, we're going to basically go through the basics of what's a heat pump. Um, we're going to talk about why this is important, why we want to be thinking about getting off of fossil fuels and how we heat and cool our homes, both for our own comfort and pocketbooks, as well as for the climate. And then we will um, talk about some examples and have a chance at Q&A. So, just want to do a quick thank you for, to Sue Doherty at NYSERDA for setting up the webinar technology for us, uh, and to Central New York Regional Planning and Development Board, whose offices we're sitting in this evening as we do this with a good conference phone. Um, and I want to acknowledge that we are broadcasting from the traditional territory of the Onondaga Nation. And just a fun fact I'd like to throw out there in the beginning of my presentation, that the Onondaga Nation's fire department building is, and community room is geothermally heated and cooled. It's one of the few first places I learned about geothermal heating. And I want to thank all who are attending. attending. So again, here's the overview of our event. And again, so we're going to talk about what's important, and uh, we're also going to have Dick Kornbluth talk about home performance improvements, which I don't think I said before, and that's actually a really key piece we can talk about. So what is Heat Smart CNY? So Heat Smart CNY is a grassroots community initiative organized by volunteers from across the Central New York region, chosen for their expertise and knowledge, and with support from the Central New York Regional Planning and Development Board, Alliance for a Green Economy, which I work for, and uh, the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, or NYSERDA. Our goal of this campaign is to support people improving their heating and cooling systems through energy efficiency improvements to their homes and buildings. This can include insulation, air source heat pumps, ground source or geothermal heat pumps, and heat pump water heaters. We are one of eight communities there. What, we are one of eight communities um, in New York that have received funding from NYSERDA to run these outreach campaigns. For people who have been part of the Solarize campaigns, um, it's going to be a similar model. And as we go forward, we're talking about why do we want to think about being heat smart? And it comes down to me for three C's. It's cost savings, it's comfort, and it's climate. Um, if you take a look outside today and anywhere in upstate New York, you can be reminded that it's no surprise that we need heat in this region. Um, and yet many of us have inefficient aging systems or using expensive oil, propane, or resistance heating. Um, for comfort, we often have leaky old homes that we spend more money to heat than we really need to. It can also come down to allergies, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. And for climate, it's both, we're talking about both the ability to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions from our homes and buildings, and also adapting to a changing climate. Any of these alone are good reasons to consider switching up the way you do your heating and cooling. So what do you think uses the most energy in your house? It's a rhetorical question because everyone's on mute currently, but um, the short version is almost 75% of the energy usage in a house is for heating and cooling in hot water. That's a lot of energy. And the average New York home is paying almost $2,500 a year in bills. When we look at the bigger picture, that energy in 90% of those households is coming from burning fossil fuels. And we know well that burning fossil fuels releases greenhouse gases. 38% of our greenhouse gas emissions from combustion in New York State come from heating and cooling buildings. 
it's only slightly behind transportation. And so this is a big piece of the, the challenges that we have to tackle as a society right now. The good news is this isn't all doom and gloom. It can seem like it's doom and gloom sometimes, but it's not all doom and gloom. Because while even though we are seeing in surge in emissions and um, they're up 2.5% since 2017 uh, and the increased emissions are being noted as having heating and cooling as a key factor, um, it's not doom and gloom because it's hope, because it's something we can change. And it's something that's in our power that we can do that can not only help the climate but help our own quality of life. Here's the key piece behind our, the thinking. As the, grid get, as the grid gets greener, the more things that we electrify that are historically fossil fuel burning, the better. As you can see in this graph, the top line is the current emissions from all gasoline vehicles and fossil fuel heated buildings. It's a declining line over time because we are seeing new efficiencies. But if we were to switch to electricity, that is an automatic 50% greenhouse gas reduction, and then any as the grid gets greener, everything that's attached to the grid automatically gets more efficient. And this is exciting for me because when I looked at the New York Independent Service Operators um, reports from last year, over half of our energy in upstate New York is already coming from renewable energy. So we have no reason not to be considering all our alternatives. And of course, in New York, there are really strong goals set that are leading the way in terms of how we're going to see our way into the future. And so New York State is committed to reducing the energy sector emissions by 40% by 2030 from 1990 levels. They've just upped the renewable energy goal to be 70% by 2030. And they're looking at a 600 trillion BTU increase in statewide energy efficiency. And that's the piece where our homes come in. It's not all our homes, it's not all our buildings, but it, those will play a big role. So what is a heat pump? I'm going to just do a really quick question here to start off, and then we'll go into more about home performance. But a heat pump, why this is a game-changing technology, even though they've been around for a long time at this point, is because instead of burning fossil fuels or burning electricity, which is what electric resistance heating is, um, heat pumps instead are capturing the energy around us in the environment. The sun warms the ground around us, and that energy gets stored by the ground. Um, and also, there's always energy in the air around us as well. So heat pumps capture that energy and transfer it into a space and pump up the heat to what we want in our homes. And the fun thing is, in the summertime, they can run reverse and they pump the heat out of our homes and buildings. So, we're going to now talk about air sealing and insulation. And Dick Kornblut is going to join us and share his expertise. What you see uh, on the screen are images of two men. One, one of these men is uh, taking a nice casual s stroll on a spring day, and the other man is dragging a cart through Antarctica. In fact, he's been in the news re recently because he's the guy who crossed Antarctica by himself with no assistance. What's interesting and important about this is that uh, the guy who's walking down the path on a spring day um, which is maybe 75 degrees out, his body will require only about 2,750 calories a day for him to sustain his weight and his health. On the other hand, the guy who's working um, and walking at minus 40 degrees um, is actually requiring over 8,000 calories a day for him to survive and to sustain health because he is losing heat to the atmosphere at a much greater rate than the first guy walking on a spring day. Well, this is about your house. Um, if you look at your house on a, an uninsulated and not air sealed house in the wintertime, it might require 100,000 BTUs of heat an hour in order for the house to remain comfortable for its occupants. Once that house is insulated and air sealed, um, 
that same house might only require 70,000 BTUs per hour to maintain the same level of comfort because um, the heat is actually kept inside the house and it's not losing and leaking out. So why do we insulate an air seal? We do it to burn less fuel, save more money. One advantage of it is that if you're replacing your heating unit and your house is well insulated and air sealed, you'll actually be able to put in, in many cases, a smaller heating unit and save on the cost of installation. Insulating your house will also reduce drafts, it'll increase your comfort, it'll allow the heating system to create more even heating and cooling so that you don't have some rooms cool, cooler and some rooms warmer. It will also can dramatically make your house quieter. Um, and finally, it'll reduce or eliminate damaging ice dams, and I can't imagine a more appropriate time to mention that than today when we're supposed to get six to 10 inches of snow tonight. So let's talk about ice dams. So is this your house in the wintertime? Well, how does that happen? Well, it happens not because necessarily you don't have insulation in your attic, but it does, it is caused by heat loss. So what happens is in an attic that is leaking heat, heat will rise and will start to melt the snow and create um, water. And that water will then run down to the edge of the roof. And once it reaches the edge of the roof where there's no more sources of heat under it, it will freeze and form icicles. However, if that whole process takes place when it's really, really, really cold like today, it's possible that the icicles will not even form because the water will continue to freeze instantly at the edge of the roof and it will form ice dams. And as water freezes, it expands. And when ice dams are created, they can push up underneath the shingles and they can create interior damage to the home. Um, this has happened over many, many, many years. This problem has occurred. So how do you prevent this from happening? Well, insulation alone may not stop ice dams. And the reason for that is that you lose heat not just through um, the ceiling um, where, uh, where insulation may, may prevent the heat from escaping. So I'll give you a simple example. If you go out on a nice winter day when there's no wind blowing and you put on a warm sweater, that warm sweater will do a pretty good job of keeping you comfortable. However, when the wind blows, that sweater will not work as well. And in fact, it will actually allow um, that cold air to blow through the sweater and cool you off. So what you do in the winter time when you go out is you don't depend on a wool sweater. You put on a windbreaker. So what the windbreaker does is it stops the, the air from going through uh, the sweater and cooling you off. Well, insulation is very similar. So fiberglass insulation is a lot like a wool sweater it doesn't stop moving air. However, if you were to uh, put some kind of air sealing between the fiberglass insulation or the blown-in insulation in your heated living space, it's exactly the same as putting a windbreaker on. So the heat actually stays in the house and doesn't continue to travel into the attic. So there are many, many places in your attic in your house that you cannot see because they're hidden away in the structure of your house where heat can escape. And they're around recessed lights, through attic hatches, around chimneys, around plumbing stack vents. They even can escape through the tops of your walls if your walls are sheetrocked and are not tightly sealed at the top. So what do you do about it is you air seal. This is simply a, another diagram showing lots of places for air leakage plumbing stacks, recessed lights, um, chimney framing caps, um, electrical penetration. Every time an electrician wants to drop a wire through your ceiling and goes up in the attic and drills a hole, that hole with the wire in it becomes a source of heat, of warm air escaping to the attic. So how do we find these places? We use what's called a blower door test. And a blower door test is simply a fan mounted in the outside uh, door of your house. And what the fan does is it pulls air out of your house. And while it's pulling air out of your house when it runs, it's also pulling air from your attic into your house. And that is either going to be warm air in the summertime or it's going to be cold air in the wintertime. And a trained technician with the proper tools can actually find those leaks using an infrared camera. 
And how that works is this is an insulated attic. This is an insulated attic in an attic that had massive ice dam problems. And what happened was, if you look at this diagram, the top is the, uh, is the standard digital picture. If you look at the bottom left, the bottom left shows the same image taken without the blower door running. And if you look on the bottom right, you'll notice those what looks like um, lines of light colored lines that are actually going down the interior walls. Those are actual attic air that is being drawn down the wall by the blower door, which means that the tops of those walls are actually open to the attic. You would never in a zillion years know that standing in the room and looking out and looking at it because all you would see is what you see in that top picture. So using a blower door and an infrared camera, a train technician can find where the air leaks are and then give you a proposal to seal them up so that you don't have ice dams, so that you save energy in your house and you make your house more comfortable. There are other home performance issues actually that are addressed by a home performance contractor including moisture issues in your attic or basement, um, indoor air quality, excessive dust, condensation on your windows. Um, carbon monoxide is a major problem, which actually this entire program is designed to totally eliminate from your house because when you take out combustion appliances, you eliminate burning things. And when you eliminate burning things, you eliminate the risk of carbon monoxide. So home performance contractors deal with energy bills and drafts and hot and cold rooms and mold and mildew. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. And so I wanted to let people know about a couple of programs that are available through NYSERDA that are specifically aimed at helping people with their home performance. Um, one is the NYSERDA Empower New York program. And this provides a no-cost energy efficiency solutions for homes of eligible, income eligible New Yorkers. Households have to be under 60% of the state's median income. And I'll show a slide in a second about what those numbers look like. Uh, solutions that they can provide include air sealing to plug leaks and reduce drafts, installations to make the home more comfortable, replacement of old and inefficient uh, appliances, new energy efficient lighting, um, et cetera, et cetera. And the really great thing is that this program is, again, no cost to the people who are enrolled in it. Um, these are the eligibility guidelines in 2019. Uh, you see the household side, size on the, on the left, and then you see the maximum gross annual income, which is the income before tax deductions, um, on the right. And so if you fall under those numbers with your household, you should definitely enroll with our program and we'll connect you with the Empower program. And that can help tighten up your home. And the reason why we emphasize tightening up the home with the home performance improvements with insulation and air sealing is it helps us right size the heat pumps later on. And even if you don't go and install a heat pump, if you do the energy efficiency, the, as they say, the, you know, the best way to save energy is to not use it. So that's why we are emphasizing energy efficiency as well in this program. So there's also the Assisted Home Performance with Energy Star program. And it's uh, for, again, it's income eligibility. Uh, it covers 50% of the cost of improvements, up to $4,000 per project for single family homes. And two to four unit residential homes with income eligible residents may qualify for a discount of up to $8,000. Um, and household income must be less than 80% of the state or area median income. And again, here is the income guidelines in central New York for that program. Um, all the numbers are the same once you get to two people and above, but the, if you are a single person in your household, then um, the numbers change slightly between Onondaga, Mass, and Oswego counties, which are 41,500. And uh, Cortland County, which is at 38,400, and Cayuga County, which is at 38,500. So this is a thing everyone had all here to hear: heat pump 101. How the what the heck is a heat pump? And again, why are we talking about heat pumps? And we're talking about them because we want to help homes and businesses in our community save on energy. Um, over 40% of New Yorkers heat with fuel oil, propane, or electric resistance, and other non-gas fuels. 
Um, and for anyone who's on those fuels, installing a heat pump is going to make a major financial benefit to your household. Um, there's savings of 15 to 50 percent uh, versus oil, 45 to 70 percent versus propane, and 60 to 75 percent versus electric resistance, depending on your local energy costs. Um, and we want residents in our community to be more comfortable in their homes year-round. We said these are clean heating and cooling technologies, and with the summer is getting hotter and hotter, the desire to stay cool in summer in our community is increasing, um, and we want to do that efficiently. And of course, additionally, these technologies offer some of the new comfort benefits, like zone heating in the home, as well as addressing hot and cold spots. And of course, it makes the homes healthier. These technologies offer advanced filtration systems that can remove pollutants and allergens, improving air indoor air quality for sensitive individuals. Um, it can also reduce the amount of fossil fuels burned in your house, which is reducing or eliminating air pollutants like nitrous oxide emissions um, and carbon monoxide. And it, you know, nitrous oxide emissions can increase asthmatic activity and increase the risk of respiratory infections. Um, so, you know, the air we breathe in our homes directly affects our health, and these can help make for healthier breathing in our, in our homes. And of course, as we said, you know, there's climate benefits as well. And one of the neat things is the synergy with solar photovoltaic systems. Um, we've been to many homes in the central New York area that have both solar panels on their roofs and have air source or ground source heat pumps for their heating and cooling. So basically, their solar panels are doing the heating and cooling for their home. And every home is different. And so there's many different solutions. The good news is there's many different kinds of heat pump technologies to meet those solutions. And there's no one right way to switch your home from fossil fuels. Um, our installers will come up with different proposals and it's up, you know, we work with the homeowners to help evaluate which ones make the most sense for a given person situation. We're offering three technologies uh, through our program. We're focusing on air source heat pumps, ground source or geothermal heat pumps, and heat pump water heaters. Now, is that going to work? Yes. So, Nicer is putting this great video about ground source heat pumps. I just want to play this real quick. Heating and cooling your home account for more than half the energy in a typical home, making it the largest expense and largest greenhouse gas emitter. But did you know that even though the weather around us changes throughout the year, the ground underneath is able to stay at a constant temperature all year round? That's because the ground soaks up 44% of the sun's rays and stores it like a battery. What if we were able to put this ground battery to good use? That's exactly what a ground source heating and cooling system does. How does it work? An underground pipe system is installed to access the ground's constant temperatures. In the summertime, the earth is cooler than your home, so excess heat from the home is transferred to the ground. As the warmer water comes into contact with the ground, it naturally cools off, which then returns to your home to extract more heat from the house. In the wintertime, the earth is warmer than the outside air, so heat from the ground can be transferred to your home to heat it up. The closed loop system is providing a continuous supply of warmer temperature to your home. By taking advantage of the sun's energy that's stored underground, ground source heating and cooling systems bring homeowners many benefits. They're quieter and more efficient to operate. In fact, for every unit of energy that these systems use, they can provide three to four and a half times that in heating or cooling energy. They're emissions free at your home, reducing your carbon footprint. They also require less maintenance and last longer because the system is protected from the weather. Lastly, they cost much less to operate. Ground source heat pumps can be installed in existing homes and buildings and new construction. New York State offers a rebate for the installation of a new ground source heat pump system in your home or building. Single family homes get up to $15,000 and buildings get up to $500,000. There are several different types of ground source heat pump systems that you can choose from that best fit your needs. You can get started by contacting a NYSERDA qualified designer and installer. They'll help you get the right type of system and apply for the rebate. There we go. 
I love the videos. It makes movement helps show everything so much better. Uh, so ground source heat pumps draw on the temperature of the ground around them. And so you can have a couple of different kinds of loops. I'll talk about those in a second. Um, but the way it basically works is there's a ground loop, and it goes through a refrigerant loop inside the home. And then it goes into the loop that is the distribution loop, the either the forced air, or if you have a hydronic system, um, either can work. And so you have many different kinds of ground loops available. Um, basically, you have vertical and horizontal systems. Vertical wells are drilled down to about 500 feet below ground, um, or you could have multiple wells of, of less depth, depending on the geology of your area. If you have a fair amount of land, you could also do a horizontal loop system, which just requires an excavator, um, which can be put in often more quickly than the uh, well drilling. And uh, it tears up your lawn a little bit, but then you put it back, and next year when your grass grows back and you get some landscaping done, it looks great. Um, we've had you can do the horizontal systems even in relatively small areas. Um, we have one homeowner in Syracuse who had a double lot, and they put a horizontal loop system in. So the loops contain uh, water mixed with 5% safe food-grade glycol, which circulates between the basement and the buried loop field, and it captures the heat that way. Um, the benefits of ground source heat pumps Again, they're extremely efficient. Um, air source heat pumps is the ASHP. Uh, ground source heat pumps are 350 to 500% more efficient than the average furnace. And they have less drop off in efficiency over time um, compared to air source heat pumps. And they have a long system lifetime and eliminate fossil fuels from home entirely. They can also provide domestic hot water. Air source heat pumps, think of it like an air conditioner that can also run in reverse to provide heating. Um, there's always energy in the air around us. Even when it's cold outside, there's still energy. It's basic fact of physics. And so the air source heat pumps capture that energy and, and draw it in. They are less efficient because they are drawing on a lower temperature uh, in the surrounding environment, and so it takes more work for them to pump up the heat to what you need it to be. That said, they're still 250% more efficient than a normal furnace. Um, this is a mini split that you're looking at here. It's got an outdoor unit, and then it has uh, the lines coming in. It goes to two indoor units. And through our program, we promote cold climate heat pumps that provide heat down to negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit efficiently. They're about 76% efficient at that temperature. Um, and they work even further cold and make it more cold. Um, heat, cold uh, air source heat pumps are typically still installed with backup heating systems, whether it's a, um, whether it's electric or if you leave a fossil fuel system in place. Um, but they are getting more and more efficient, so there are options available. Um, for mini splits, they can provide air conditioning without duct work. Um, a full heating replacement is not required. Um, so even if you weren't to replace the entirety of your fossil fuel use in your house, you could really dramatically reduce it by putting in an air source heat pump. Uh, a lot of people who are on you know, oil or propane boilers or even who are using, say, wood, um, really appreciate doing air source heat pumps to handle the heating, cooling, um, particularly the heating in the spring and the fall when you won't want to be running your uh, heating system full on, and uh, then saving the really high-powered heat for the very depths of the winter. Um, Mini splits provide uh, zone control as well as um, they're quiet and they're flexible and you can put them into many different places and they provide air filtration as well. So things to consider with air source heat pumps. Are you heating with electric baseboard to fuel oil or propane? You'll see the greatest reduction in your heating bills if you're heat with a non-gas heating fuel. But even if you're on gas, you might find some of the other benefits compelling if you answer 
Yes, to some of the other questions we're going to ask. Is your home well insulated? Heat pumps lose capacity and efficiency when it's colder outside, as we talked about with the home performance. So it's imp particularly important to have a well insulated home or to improve the insulation. Do you want to have quiet air conditioning without needing to install duct work? The ductless heat pumps don't require any duct work. And you can really claim your windows and from the noisy window shakers, which is and they're much more efficient than the window shakers. And then in addition, it's not just providing the cooling, but it can also provide some additional heating and dehumidification. Do you have people in your home who are sensitive to allergens and air pollutants? Again, these provide excellent air filtration. Are you planning a new addition to your home? Often you need to extend duct work. And if that may or may not be possible, a ductless system is a good fit for a new zone in your home. Um, do you have hot or cold spots in your home? These systems can also address those areas. And do you have an open floor plan? Those are ideal homes for using air source heat pumps, particularly this kind, because the air can then flow and cover a larger area. Um, you get the most bang for your, your buck that way. There's also hybrid or dual fuel air source heat pumps, and these are heat pumps that are attached to an existing fossil fuel furnace. We'd love for everybody to be able to get off of fossil fuels, um, but we recognize that it may not be within the financial abilities of everyone, even with all the incentives that are on the table currently. And so these are a very cost-effective solution that both gives you air conditioning in the summertime and provides supplemental heating uh, in the fall and spring. Um, they carry a programmable switchover point, so the furnace will actually know when to switch based on your settings. Um, and that you'll decide that based on what the cost of the various fuels you use are versus electricity versus um, natural gas, for example. Um, and these can still reduce fossil fuel use by 50 to 70 percent. So this is a really good plan B if a full conversion is not possible for you at this time. There's also heat pump water heaters. Like a normal water heater that goes in your basement, um, it basically looks like, like a, heat, a normal tank, just has a heat pump element on top of it. And that captures the heat from the area around the heat pump in your basement and then uses that to preheat the water. It can, it does have a backup for meeting high demand, high use. That would just be an electric resistance piece. That would be like a normal electric <coughs> resistance um, water heater. And this is just a diagram showing more about how they work. They are 200% more efficient than a normal electric water heater. And they provide an additional benefit of dehumidification in the basement. So I want to just go through some examples of systems that we know of in the area. So here are two systems. We have on the left, this is a house in Tipperary Hill. Um, it, they actually did a vertical well, two vertical wells on this property. The property did not go much further than the picture. Um, they drilled one well in the driveway and one well in the postage stamp sized yard. Um, the homeowner has solar panels on the roof and is using staple up radiant heat on the inside first floor and then forced air on the second floor. Um, so it's a water to air and water to water system and the homeowner is really, really happy with it. The initial cost that he paid was $32,500 but with the final cost being $22,500. Um, and that was only using the federal tax credit at the time. The state was not in play at that time. Um, the right house on the right has room, it was the house that had the large yard and go horizontal in theirs. Um, they spent 22000 on their uh, geothermal system, but the final cost to them was actually 13800 There's also examples locally of big commercial buildings. So down in the corner, we have the Pike Block building in downtown Syracuse. They drilled the geothermal wells right through the sidewalks 
um, and are using the salt brine aquifer underneath the city to provide the stable temperature that they're drawing on for the heat pump. Hotel Schuyler on University Hill is also uh, a heat uh, on geothermal heat pumps. And then down below that, you have the Center of Excellence in Energy and Environmental Systems. They also use geothermal. The little uh, wall unit there on the yellow wall, that's a air source heat pump. This is what I would call a near miss. This is one of our local community centers, and they installed these um, for the air conditioning. The heads themselves could provide heating as well, but then they chose to only install an air conditioning unit outside, which broke my heart a little bit. So one of the goals of our campaign is really to bring people to more awareness of these technologies and the possibilities that exist. Here's some more uh, around town. So you have Memorial City Hall in Auburn, which is a colonial revival building on the National Register of Historic Places designed in the 1930s. It's 33,000 square feet. It has a 70-ton water source heat pump and geo exchange heating and cooling system installed in 2003. Um, it was pro the project was recognized by the New York Conference of Mayors Local Government Achievement Award in 2004 as the first city hall in New York to use a geothermal system. You also have the Auburn Police and Fire Station, completed in 2007. Uh, you have the Cayuga Onondaga County BOCES Regional Education Center in Auburn. Marcellus Library, which was done in 2008, that's a, to a LEED Silver Certification. And the utility charges for Marcellus Library are less than half the cost of new buildings with a traditional heating and cool air conditioning system they found. It's also uh, in the corner where you see the drill rig. That's the Lemoyne College Jesuit residence um, had a 60-ton geothermal system put in. And then you see the Richard S. Scheinman Science Center at SUNY Oswego in the bottom. That's a 800-ton geothermal system, LEED Gold certification. These are massive, massive systems. Um, the average home is looking at a four to five ton system. And here's some air source heat pumps that are around as well. You've got on the left, you've got the old Sinclair in Skinny Atlas. It's a, the old share factory. It was built in 1871. You have the Hamilton Fire Department, the Casanova Fire Department, um, and the Preble Town Hall, which went very close to net zero with its uh, solar panels and air source heat pumps. And then there's also churches in the area. Some of these are a little further afield, but you might recognize the one on the left. That's St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. They have a geothermal system. They had 10 wells that was drilled up to 2,250 feet through the Manhattan Schist below the floor of the popular landmark. And it's capable of generating 2.9 million BTUs of air conditioning an hour and 3.2 million BTUs of heating an hour. Um, there's also Huguenot Memorial Church in Pelham, New York, and St. Patrick's Church in Syracuse also has an air source heat pump. So the benefits here, of course, we were talking about the low operational costs, and this graph gives you a sense of them. Um, electric resistance is the most expensive, propane is pretty close, oil is also extremely expensive. And then you see down the bottom, air source and ground source heat pumps. Um, the cost per unit of heat is much, much, much lower than the other ones. They also allow us to protect ourselves from fossil fuel volatility. You see the top two lines here are propane and heating oil, and the costs over the last uh, decade or so. And you can see there's been some massive spikes over time. And if you look at the electric air source heat pumps and ground source heat pumps, they also have a little bit of up and down, but it's not nearly the same sort of spikes. It's pretty stable. So there's a whole bunch of incentives on the table right now, which is the other reason we're doing this campaign, because we really want to make sure that Central New Yorkers um, have access to these. And so on top of the federal tax credit, which has been in place for a little while, for quite a while, um, although it did disappear for a little bit, um, that's a 30% federal tax credit. There's no limit to it, and you can roll that over if you can't take it all at the same time in one year. However, the 
this year that 30% tax credit at the end of this year drops down to 26%. This is again one more reason why it's important to think about looking into these technologies now. Um, there's also the nice NYSERDA rebate. For a ground source heat pump, it's $1,500 a ton. And again, a normal house is three to five tons. Um, that rebate goes through June 2019. Um, we certainly hope it will continue, but we don't have any clear guidance on that right now. And uh, NYSERDA sort of also has an air source heat pump rebate. That's $500 per outdoor unit. It goes to the installers, but all the installers in our program are passing that on to our participants. Additionally, if you are not on natural gas, if you're only on electric for national grid, um, there are additional incentives of $200 to $375 a ton for air source heat pumps, and that changes depending on the efficiency of the unit. The more efficient, the more incentive you get. For ground source heat pumps, it's $200 to $400 a ton, and they also have a $300 um, incentive for the heat pump water heaters. And then the really cool thing about HeatSmart CNY is we have some additional funding available for low to moderate income households. So if you meet those guidelines for the Empower or the Assist Home Performance with Energy Star programs that we showed earlier for the home performance and the energy efficiency, you can also qualify for up to $1,000 per home for an air source heat pump or $5,000 per home for a ground source heat pump. Again, the heat pump water heater can go through the um, to the Home Performance with Energy Star and Power programs. So I've thrown a couple of numbers out there, and again, this is all some ballpark numbers. Every home is different. The needs will be different. Um, the way you find out what the numbers are going to be for your home is to enroll in our program and have our installers come out and actually give you a quote. Um, but so air source heat pumps, if you're looking at just a single zone, like one or two head, system for a, a ductless mini split, you're looking at like the you know, sixty five hundred dollar range or so. Um, if you're looking at doing your whole house replacement, you're getting from seven thousand to twenty three thousand dollars. It can be quite a bit. Um, but there are some incentives available. The gas or air source hybrid systems, you're looking at four thousand to eight thousand dollars. A ground source heat pump is expensive. There's a lot that goes into it. You're looking at $25,000 to $45,000. Um, that said, though, those are extremely long-lasting. The ground loops that get put in um, are expected to last at 50 years at least. And um, so you don't have to replace that ever again. That's a big piece of the cost. So you don't, may not ever again, but for your foreseeable future, you do not have to replace that. And um, with all the incentives stacked on top of each other, we're seeing the cost for ground source heat pumps cut in half right now, which are really making them accessible to people to put them in. Um, and then heat pump water heaters, the cost is looking at around $3,000. Um, and then depending on if you're qualifying for the Empower program or using some of the incentives, you're looking at zero to $1,500. So here's a hypothetical case study to show how some of these instead of stack on top of each other. So say for a four ton geothermal system, you're quoted $34,500. The NYSERDA rebate would kick in $6,000. The national grid rebate would kick in $1,600. And this would be for a low to moderate income household, our Heat Smart CNY grant would kick in $5,000. Bring you down to $21,900, and you get 30% federal tax credit on that. Then it comes down to $15,330. The annual estimated savings in switching from fuel oil is about $2,451 a year. So that's money that someone would otherwise be spending normally, and it's being covered now by the geothermal system. So the simple payback on this system is 6.25 years. The estimated annual savings for switching from electricity is 1990 and the simple payback is about 7.7 7 years. And you've got net carbon savings, the 6.7 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent, um, switching from fuel oil, and a, li a lifetime savings of 167.5 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent over 25 years. And you can see the numbers for electricity. 
All right. And so here's an air source heat pump. So this is just looking at a two time release slip system. The estimated cost at the beginning is $5,497. Then I sort of rebate kicks in with $500. The national grid rebate kicks in with $750. The heat smart CNY grant kicks in with $1,000. So the net cost is $3,247. Again, this isn't replacing the whole system. This would be a supplemental system. Uh, but again, if you are on oil or propane or baseboard electric, it's going to save you money. The annual savings switching from fuel oil, you're looking at $826 a year. Switching from electricity is $653 a year. So you're looking at four to five years of will payback. And after that, you are saving a lot of money on your heating and cooling. And so then we're just going to talk about financing options. So we're still talking about a chunk of money up front, absolutely. And so this is where financing comes in. Some of our installers are able to give you an upfront cost, or basically a, a financing system that allows for a automatic reduction in your month-to-month -month costs. What's coming out of your wallet will immediately decrease. Um, again, if you're on oil or propane or electric. Um, through NYSERDA, there's a smart energy loan for up to $25,000. Um, the terms of 5, 10, or 15 years, and varying levels of interest. One of the wonderful things is that um, the lower percentage interest is actually designed for low to moderate income households. Um, and actually, it still has an additional wiggle room above the numbers I gave earlier. It's actually up to 120% of area median income. Um, through Enerbank for geothermal systems, you can finance a huge amount of money um, at 4.99%. And there's a 12-month same as cash for the tax credit. So basically, it's a 0% interest loan for the amount that you expect to have on the tax credit. And you pay that off after a year. Home Headquarters has a green CNY loan to help out. Um, up to $20,000, 7 to 10 years, it's 5.24%. And then there's always options through your own banks. If you have a fair amount of equity in your home, you can consider loans or refinancing based on your home equity. And there's additional options on top of this. Each of our installers have relationships with local banks and have a number of options they can provide to you. So what's the next steps here? Um, well, first of all, we're going to do Q&A, so you can ask us questions. Um, and if you haven't been asking questions already, um, you can type them into the chat box, and we will read from them. So here's a good chance to start asking your questions. Um, Enrolling in the HeatSmart CNY program um, means that you'll have the selected installers that you choose come to your house and talk to you about what your options are. Um, you can do a no-cost home energy assessment with them and see what the possibilities exist for your house. We have a lot of resources available on our website to learn more. Um, we have you know, more information about financing incentives. And I'm here as a resource. Dick Cornbluth here as a resource. Um, we have a HeatSmart CNY hotline. The number is 833-315-4328, or HEAT. And you can feel free to give me a call at any point if you want to talk through possibilities, if you um, have questions. And you can sign up for the program online on our website, heatsmartcny.org. If you go to enroll, there's a form there, and you sign up with that and select the installers you want to have come give you a visit, and you should get a call from them within the week. And um, again, this is a community-based campaign, so we are relying on people who this sparks interest for to help spread the word. We have a number of events coming up. You can find those on our website. Um, we are always looking for more volunteers. We're looking for people to host open houses if they've got heat pumps. And uh, we generally appreciate everyone being part of our campaign. And just, this is just a quick rubric of who our installers are and what um, technologies they offer. We um, went through a long process this fall of selecting the installers we wanted to work with. We had eight installers apply. We interviewed five, and we selected three teams. So the Ground Up Alliance is actually made up of uh, Geotherm and ASIS Energy. And uh, again, Jesse Cook is on the phone with us tonight from Geotherm. Uh, they do geothermal heat pumps, air source heat pumps, and heat pump water heaters. 
Um, Halco does everything, and Matt Dennis is with us here from Halco. And then Snug Planet really specializes in home performance and also does air source heat pump and heat pump water heaters. And there's our contact information. So I'm now going to try this presto change of thing of turning the camera around so you can actually see us. Let's see here. Sue, have we had questions coming in? We don't have, currently have any questions coming in through the Q&A or through the chat. Okay. Um, we just got a question uh, through the Q&A that says, what counties qualify for the Heat Smart CNY grant in the green CNY loan? So for the Heat Smart CNY grant, it's the five counties of Central New York, which are Cayuga, Cortland, Onondaga, Oswego, and Madison counties. I believe the green CNY loan through home headquarters is also the same. If anybody else has any other questions, they can submit them uh, through the WebEx and either the Q&A or the chat box. Okay, now we're going to switch us around. Okay, so here we are. Hi, I'm Lindsay. Hi, I'm Dick. Hi, I'm John. Matt. Okay. All right, and I'm going to move this down so you can actually get to John and Matt. Do you guys want to, um, I'll actually, let's give the installers a chance to say a few words, and um, we will let people have a chance to ask their questions in the chat box. So, here we go. And actually, let's start with Jesse since Jesse's on the phone. Jesse, do you want to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about geotherm? Sure. This is uh, Jesse Cook from Geotherm, and I work with ACES Energy as well. We, we created Ground Up, and it's our organization to uh, spread the word and help people get rid of fossil fuels in general. And it's really exciting to hear you talk about it, Lindsay. That. It is so clear that moving heat is so much more efficient than making heat, and that's what all these technologies do. And then also the idea of looking at your house and using less heat is another important factor. So you want to tackle all of our loads from both ends, and that's what this is all, all about. Um, in, in, at Geotherm, we specialize in the heat moving technology, so air source heat pumps, geothermal heat pumps, or air source water heaters. Um, and it's really exciting that with all the um, education and incentives that uh, this is a, a booming industry and a, a lot of value is gonna be brought to, to our, 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 our neighborhoods, really getting rid of setting our fuels on fire and, and trying to go with this archaic idea of what we can do to heat and cool our houses. Um, so I'll turn it over to, uh, to whoever's next. Hi, I'm uh, John King. I'm with uh, Snug Planet. Uh, you know, a little about Snug. We were founded 12 years ago. We really focus um, as holistically as possible on your home as a system. Um, and, you know, just to add to, you know, what Jesse was saying, you know, it's very important to, you know, tighten up the home first to make sure it's the most efficient home you can have so that you can put in the smallest system that you can. That's going to save you on the operating cost, it's going to save you on the installation cost, and honestly it's just going to make you a lot more comfortable in your home as well. Um, and so it's important to really come at this from a lot of angles. Um, one thing I want to mention too is, you know, we talk a lot about the kind of savings you can see, let's say if you're on propane, if you're on oil, um, but I don't want to discourage anyone using any, any kind of fuel from looking at this, um, because you know, if nothing else, you're going to result, in, you know, you're going to see a huge environmental benefit 
you're going to make yourself more comfortable and think of it as future proofing. You know, you never know what's going to happen 10 years from now, 12 years from now with energy markets. So you're never going to hurt yourself by doing this. Um, so just keep in mind you know, the big picture. All right, I guess I'll turn it over to Matt. Hey, everyone. Thanks for, uh, for joining us here tonight. My name is Matt Dennis with Halco Energy. A um, little bit about Halco. Halco has been in business since 1984. Uh, we're a whole home energy contractor, so we uh, we offer everything from uh, traditional HVAC, heat pumps, geothermal, uh, insulation, air sealing, uh, moisture control, basement waterproofing, pretty much anything uh, the house needs as far as an energy uh, factor goes. Um, we've been installing heat pumps for over 30 years. Uh, like I said, as a home, whole home energy contractor, we offer... 24 hours a day, seven day a week, 365 day a year service. So if anything goes wrong with the system, we can take care of it. If you call us at 2 a.m. on a Sunday uh, morning, a uh, real life person is going to answer the phone. Uh, but because we are uh, because we look at the house as a whole, um, we look at the house as a system. Um, we don't, uh, uh, we're able to, to tackle um, a variety of different factors and really uh, see what it's going to take to minimize the energy impact of the house, reduce the uh, your carbon emissions, make your house as green as possible and as economic as possible. Uh, and we can also get you to a net zero, which means you can produce as much energy as you uh, consume, because uh, we also install solar. So if your goal is to be as energy efficient as possible, we can certainly get you there. Uh, but if your goal is just to take uh, take baby steps um, and do one piece at a time, we can get you there too. So um, from, uh, from start to finish, we can uh, pretty much satisfy whatever you're looking for. Um, and uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to Lindsay. Sure. Do we have any more questions, Sue? We did have a question come in. I, I answered uh, via the, the Q&A myself, but the, the question was actually about whether or not there's a similar campaign going on in Rochester, New York. Um, there is a campaign going on in Rochester, New York. That campaign is actually called Sustainable Homes Rochester. You can find a list of all of the existing campaigns that are operating in New York State by going to the NYSERDA webpage um, and looking for the Clean Heating and Cooling Communities program and the programs and services. And, and um, if you can't find it easily, you can contact me. My name is Sue Doherty. Um, and if you can't find me easily, uh, Lindsay, hopefully you'll be able to share my contact information with anybody who reaches out to you as well. Absolutely. you know, 10, 15 years ago, that was a concern. Much below freezing, these things wouldn't keep working. You'd want to shut them off and cook, um, kick onto your backup fuel. These days, you have extremely advanced heat pumps like the Mitsubishi Hyperheat series. They're able to extract heat from air when it's negative 13 degrees outside. So we still advise, yeah, you, know, you want a backup system because in this climate, we'll get some occasional days colder than that. But with an air source heat pump and these days with the high efficiency ones, you might run that backup system two, three days a year at most. So really it's just there for emergencies. Um, and you don't have to worry so much about a whole home advanced air source heat pump system covering everything that you need to do. Um, that's probably the most common question I get. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'll, uh, I'll just piggyback on, on what John had said. Um, I, I honestly, uh, I personally, I have a ductless mini split system in my house um, and I don't have a backup system. Uh, but my my uh, units work just fine. Uh, we had that cold snap in January when it was negative 10. Uh, they were trucking right along and kept my house at 68, 69 degrees, very comfortable. Um, so, you know, they, they, they work just fine. That, that is a question that, that does come up. Uh, does it work? Uh, folks will say, oh, I heard this or I saw that. Um, you know, to John's point, uh, yeah, the efficiencies have changed. The technology has changed. And there are a lot of different um, options out there, a lot of different flavors when it comes to these things. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, as long as you've got the right equipment and what is, and I, and I underline, um, you've got the right system installed correctly and designed correctly for your house, uh, it'll work great. Um, unfortunately, uh, more people um, you know, point out when something is wrong than when it is right. So um, 
I would say talk to to your installers and ask the right questions and um, you know done correctly uh, these things work just fine. Yeah. And I think that's the benefit of going through a program like this because only vetted installers have gotten through. So you're not going to get someone who's fly by night throw something in on a wall without really understanding the nuances of the technology. When you're dealing with well qualified installers, you're going to know that you're getting the right equipment that's properly designed and installed to specifications so that it's actually going to work um, up to its full potential. Absolutely. And I realize I forgot to mention there's one more incentive that we're going to talk about, which is right now and is only through the 15th of March. So if this is your interest, sign up right now on our website. Um, there is an additional air source heat pump incentive from Mitsubishi through our Mitsubishi Diamond contractors, Halco and Sun Planet, um, that is for, it's a, it's a gift card of $250 if you do a single zone system or $500 if you do a double zone system. Um, so it's another, it's another chunk coming off of the top oh, of that. And every little bit and helps. Little bit helps. <laughs> Yeah, when you stack up all those incentives, uh, all of a sudden these things um, can get pretty, pretty favorable, pretty comparable to um, uh, alternatives. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you get to a point where it's not much more than slapping in a new gas furnace and water heater. Right. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge that we're finding is just these are technologies that people aren't familiar with. Right. And uh, so overcoming that first initial. Well, there was a there was a unknown. there was a time where people didn't want to drive cars either. <laughs> they thought it was, you know, it was going to kill you, and they wouldn't give up their horse yeah. and buggy. So I, I, my great grandfather, my great grandfather switched from building carriages to selling Model Ts. Mm -hmm. So he was uh, keeping up there. And, and something to keep in mind with this technology too: every refrigerator and air conditioner you've ever seen is a heat pump. The basic technology is is I think a century old at this point, um, and well established now. It's a lot more advanced and a lot more refined than those, you know, clunky old thousand pound refrigerators you had in your home 60 years ago. Um, but it's well understood. You know, this, this isn't something that's come out of the blue these past few years. It's something that engineers have been refining for a century at this point. There's a, there's a fellow by the name of Carrier you, you all might be familiar with. <laughs> exactly. But, um, you know, so it's, uh, it, 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 it works, you know, and it's, at the end of the day, it, it does work. Um, and you can be comfortable and assured that, um, something like this in your house uh, can be relied upon um, and you're not a test it's not new um, it's just not as common um, as, you know as the traditional system is um, but it uh, it certainly does work <clears throat> what I will say is new is the no verb is available yeah. and yes it is. you know this is uh, I think a testament to New York State's commitment to energy efficiency and to the community's commitment um, and it's a matter of, of trying to figure out, you know, what what works to help people overcome these initial barriers. Um, are they financial? Are they structural? Um, and so, you know, another part of our campaign is also keeping track of people's experiences in, in investigating these technologies, um, because the more we learn, uh, the more we can help make it a reality for more people. I see another question from Mark Feldman. How would a heat pump system tie into the ductwork of an old multi-story city home? Well, um, assuming, so there's a couple of different ways you can do that. So it's assuming the ductwork is adequate, and I'll be 100% honest with you, a lot of the times we go into houses and the ductwork is not adequate, um, especially with some, some older homes that have been retrofitted and, and adapted and changed as, as the years have gone by. Uh, ductwork is, uh, is is a special kind of animal. Um, properly installed uh, equipment today, um, higher efficient equipment today, heat pumps and whatnot, uh, they require a different amount of airflow. Um, and a lot of you know conventional duct systems you know, need some tweaking. But um, assuming all things equal and you know everything is working fine, uh, there's no reason we can't uh, put in a, uh, a heat pump, uh, whether it be geothermal or air source, uh, connected to that existing ductwork so you can operate your heating and cooling as you always have uh, on a single thermostat. Um, and instead of a furnace burning in your, in your basement, uh, you now have this heat pump that is producing your heating and your cooling um, all off of one piece of equipment. But, you know, full disclosure, 
dock modifications uh, are a big part of these systems. Um, so that's when you need a, you know, a qualified contractor to really come in, look at your system, and really tell you uh, what it's going to take to, to make it work correctly. I'd say, you know, you don't want to limit this to just thinking about ductwork. You know, a lot of old homes here still have steam radiators, um, might have hot water radiators. And in some cases, yeah, you can, you can tie a heat pump into those. Um, but let's say you've got a house where maybe you can't make the existing ductwork work. There's a lot of options to still get your heat pumps in, whether that's different distribution with your ground source, whether that's putting the air source heat pump units on the wall. Um, so the best thing to do is just to have someone come take a look. Let a professional figure out, you know, can we use what's here or can we come up with a more creative solution? Uh, but these days with where the technology is at, you can do something for every home. I, I've never seen a home where we couldn't figure out some kind of heat pump solution. I was most excited when I went to visit that temporary hill home and learned about single up radiant heat. Like, that's just a dream <laughs> for an old drafty uh, city house. The idea that you can staple up underneath yeah. in your basement a hydronic system to warm the floors. Yeah. It was it was great. Also something that requires skill and know how to do. Oh yeah. That's very That's true. Very it sounds true. very simple. It does, it does but there's, there's it sounds real easy to staple up a tube and just call it a day. Yeah. There's there's a bit more to it to make it work the way you want it to. Yeah. And I I can tell you all the horror stories I've I've come into is like, yeah, my, my, my friend up the street, you know, did this on a weekend and it's just like <laughs> I can tell. And they delaminated their floors. Yeah. Uh, Buckled floors, yeah. haven't seen that. So yeah, it's like with all things, I mean you it's it's best to let the professionals really get a sense for what you need and what can't be done. Mm -hmm. Jesse, is there anything you'd like to add in? No, I'm I'm sorry, I'm unmuting myself. Uh these guys have done a great job talking about it, so uh I, I thank you guys. Um you know, it's an exciting time that the, the technology now has gone beyond really a lot of the stereotypes, and that's one of the things we got to overcome, and that's through education. Is yes, historically, air source heat pumps um, in northern climates, people had 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 not not the most positive experiences because when it got really cold if there wasn't if it wasn't designed right they could have issues with today's technology we can really push it and and give you 100 percent of your heating and cooling with, with geothermal and ground source that's guaranteed you know we're, we're interfacing with a thermal mass that's the same no matter how cold it is so we have peak efficiencies and never need to be, be considered of are we going to need backup the geo has always got that peak capacity but with the air source heat pump technology the way it is now, it's a really exciting time of what we can do with this. And it's, it's ability to be applied to almost every home could take advantage of an air source heat pump in some manner. So it's just a matter of what's the right design. And I love that we're working with experts in all of this, that any of these, any one of these groups can come in and look at your specific situation. And that's the key, is to look at what design is right for this specific home, and there's always a great solution that's going to do a lot for environmentally and also do a lot financially for people. So it's a very exciting time. Did you say question, will this webinar be available by recording? Yes, I did record it, and I checked in the middle of the, record, in the webinar to make sure that I did actually hit record, and I did. So it will be available. We will put it on our website. Um, Hi, here I am. Um, and it's uh, probably I say within the, a week or two we'll get it up. So it'll be available. You can take a look at it. Do we want to maybe just unmute people too and see if there's anyone who's got a question that can't somehow access that chat box? Sure. All right, fair warning, everyone. You're being unmuted. While we're waiting, Dick, is there anything you'd like to add in? Um, yeah. The thing I would like to add in is essentially that in all cases, um, the, heat, the heat pump is the ultimate solution, but a prerequisite in getting the house as tight and as well insulated as possible. That will reduce your heat pump 
installation costs possibly, it will definitely reduce your heat pump operating costs. So that's the first step. Yes, I would, I would agree 100% with that. Um, insulation, air sealing, tightening up the building envelope, uh, shoring up the building envelope, that should always be your first step for two reasons. One, uh, it makes sense to reduce your heat load before you try to make something, but two, um, it's, it, it's the cheapest option. Absolutely. Um, regardless of how you heat your house, the less you can heat your house with, the, the, more, the more savings you're going to get out of it. So um, strongly recommend insulation air sealing first. And just to add to that, I mean, it, it, it's going to save you more energy that way. But even if you're putting enough heat in your house to keep the average temperature where you want it, a drafty room is a drafty room. A cold floor is a cold floor. So tightening up your house, it's not only economically the best way to start these projects, it's just going to make it more comfortable to live in your house. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, for, for as much as we're concerned about the environment, we're all mission-driven here, but that's a big factor. You want to be comfortable in your own home. That's where you spend the majority of your time. And on top of all that, just the process of going through, of doing that energy audit, of really looking at your home, is going to let us get the information we need to really design the proper system for you. Um, so just starting, starting with that assessment, starting with that in-depth look at the whole home is just the best way to get the whole process rolling, um, as well as really getting you those best results. So I'm not only running this campaign, I'm also a participant, and um, having each of these guys come out and take a look at my house, and I found that even just having a walkthrough, an initial consultation, not even doing a whole energy assessment yet, um, but just having guys who know exactly what they're looking for, and women, there's also women in sellers too. Yes. Um, About half our staff. It's half your staff, that's yes, right. And um, people who know exactly what they're looking at, um, I learned a lot about my house that I didn't actually know, and I've lived there for 10 years. So. Hey, Lindsay. Um, You'll have to actually unmute people on your side. I, I don't have the privileges right now to do it. Okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, here's a couple more questions. Um, oh, no, it's not. Oh. Here. Where, click on each person individual. Where do I see the participants, Sue? On the right-hand side, there should be an attendee list, or at least a, a link to expand the attendee list. Okay. Um, okay. Right. No. Well, I'm seeing for the people who are all on here that I can see. No. As far as I can tell, everyone who is on here has actually asked questions. So if there's anyone on the webinar who has questions that I can't see, I apologize and feel free to send them to me and I will follow up. Um, um, you can reach me at lindsay at heatsmartcny.org and um, or uh, get at that phone number 833-315-4328 and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions and move forward from there. So thank you everyone for being part of the webinar tonight. Really appreciate it. And thank you to all of our participants, and thank you again to Sue for hosting the webinar. Have a great evening. Hopefully it doesn't sound too much where you are. Bye everyone. Good night. Thanks, Lindsay.